for being, you know, um, so many of these different things that I was just saying. I don't want to get too into that. We could, um, but it's, it's, you know, it, it started to feel like because I was not exalted in that energy, it didn't work. It works for people who are really aligned with it, like people who are in their masculine, mostly men. It works for them, and it becomes exalted, and it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. But for me, it was not exalted, and it was learned. And once I started unlearning it, I started really feeling first energetic, vital, juicy, connected. And I was like rediscovering myself that was always there, but just was hidden, pushed away, and shamed. And I'm going to use that word because it was shame. I never let myself be fully seen in, in any environment that required power or leadership. Because I didn't trust those areas in me that they would be good enough because it felt like the easy route, that it would be good enough to actually serve and lead and create impact and be successful. So I started learning, unlearning, and learning. And, um, and I realized how powerful these aspects of myself, which are more on the feminine side, could be. And when I started leading with those, not just like allowing them to have a little seat at the table, but leading with it, because that's exalted in me, it was like the short road. Um, I, I can't even tell you all of the feedback that the world gave me and allowed me to really come into my personal power. So I'm a big fan of the feminine. And a lot of people, as I launched this, were asking me, well, you know, and I have lots of amazing, amazing men in my life. And, well, what about, you know, because they're all into the question of the masculine, and, well, we need to talk about integration, and they're all feeling this cosmic feminine rising, right? Everybody's feeling it. And they're like, well, we need to, you know, it's about the integration of the two polarities, and I'm so about that. That is the end game. That is the end game. But I don't want to skip it. It's not time right now for integration because too long and too often we, we leave the feminine out and we focus on the masculine. So if we just focus on integration right now, we're, going to like, we're not really going to experience the, the feminine in its full splendor. Now I know this is like sort of technology area and some of you like from Google and Amazon are going, okay, the feminine, cosmic rising, am I in the right place? I'm here, you know? Like, didn't know I was coming to this, but it is, it's all part of it. Because I feel like you're feeling it too or you wouldn't have signed up. It's emerging and it happens. It can be subterfuge. I'm using the word feminine because I have not found a better word. And I'm tired of feeling shame around talking about what's feminine and what's not feminine. I really want to talk about it because it's actually, it's going to make a difference. It has so much power. So we're going to talk about it, we're going to explore it, and then we'll integrate it. I just don't want it to get swept under the rug in the, in the, in the name of like the integration, because that happens a lot for the feminists, like the history of feminine energy is just kind of getting swept or, okay, it's nice, pat on the head. So here's the power. Our number one superpower is relationship. Now, in technology, we're always talking about the age of connectivity, right? Which can happen to a certain degree through the internet, through the web, and, but it happens to a much stronger degree and a much more impactful degree when we're taking it on one-on-one. -on -one. So whether you're leading or you're um, just maybe starting a company and you're, you don't have anybody but you and a few people, or you're working across thousands of people, your superpower as, as women is that power to connect on a very real level. And there's so much that goes to that. And that's why it's a little bit nuanced, where our world has gotten more complex right now. When we needed the masculine to build the infrastructure, that's what we needed. We needed the black and white thinking, we needed the science, we needed the borders, we needed the constructs, we needed the bridges and the roads and the technology. And I'm not saying, when I say masculine and feminine, I'm not exclusively saying men and women, so you have to, I'm kind of like shifting between that, but I don't want to polarize men. Some women are primarily masculine, but mostly we are talking about masculine and feminine dynamics. If you know about yin and yang, these things play out all over, they play out in food, they play out in energies, they play out in gender, okay? So those polarities exist across many, many different 
constructs in our life. So, we needed the masculine, we built the bridges, we built the infrastructure, but now things are so complex that there's, there's, they're so nuanced that we need to rely on a little bit more of the unknown. And this is a place where the masculine is not comfortable. Okay, so we're going into a very complex societal situation here globally, and the masculine is not comfortable there. And the world is crying out, and I'm, just, I'm not being over dramatic here, they're crying out for a new way. Across the world, we need a change. And I am such a believer in diversity. And I love that word, in inclusivity, okay, yes, but it's really about the diversity. The most creative we can be is when we have those polarities, when we have diversity. That's the future. It's like a given, it's not even a, a conversation. And I know we have work to do to make sure that we you know, make the numbers and you know, get more women into positions of leadership, but I'm really not as interested in that. I'm interested in the level of consciousness that we bring to the table in leadership, not the numbers of women. Okay? We have an opportunity because we're tuned into this subtle energy of connection and connectivity at a very real level. We have the opportunity to raise the vibration in leadership positions that will actually trickle down through societal levels. How we relate to people, how we communicate to people, the level of intimacy that we bring. And I'm saying intimacy not just in terms of your partner. I'm talking about intimacy when we in tonight in those power circles. That's a level of intimacy. And that's what we do really, really well. So, connectivity, relationships. Now the masculine, that's an unknown. I don't know how many times if you've had a, a, you know, a significant man in your life, they're like, just, just tell me what it is, this is my husband. Just tell me what you want, babe. Just, just write it down, you know? And, and like, I can't believe that's not obvious to you, you know? Like, I, you know, I was feeling this way, you couldn't see that, you know? But it's nuanced. It's like, oh my God, there's, a, there's like a loss of control there. And that's okay, but we need to fill that. We can't rely on this hard line, black and white thinking to solve the world's problems now. We need to rise and bring in this intuition. Okay, so we're talking about relationship, now we're gonna talk about intuition. This is an underused superpower. Totally underused. How many people, are, there are women that are investing now, purely on intuition, and they are cashing it in. I'm not saying that we wanna, you know, just all get out there and just be like, oh, I like that's pink, let me, or, you know, hey, I like the way this looks, and let me just throw $10,000 at it, whatever. But, but it's happening, people are actually starting, women are starting to actually use it and not feel shame around it. Gut feeling. I mean, it's, it's a superpower and we are super connected to it. Now what is intuition but connection? I mean, think about it, like when you have a feeling, you're connected to some kind of outer, more knowing, big K knowing. That's, that's what that intuition is, connected to something bigger to yourself that's saying, okay, yes, there's, there's wisdom over here, there's wisdom over there. So it's another form of relationship. You can't have true connection and true relationship without vulnerability. It just cannot happen. You can't be defended and, and expect intimacy. It just, it's, it's unrealistic. And, and you might get connected to somebody, but it's not gonna be the type of connection that we are capable of. So vulnerability is another component here. It's a superpower. It's a superpower to come to the table in a, in a negotiation and be completely vulnerable and just say, I'm not, you know, being open to being naked and showing ourselves. And then the other, there's so many, I don't want to just go through, this is, well, we'll talk about this, but I don't want to go through line by line, what does it mean to be a feminine leader? But there's so many superpowers that we have that over the years we've sort of like, oh, you know, it's not really that important. You know, it's not really that valuable. This is valuable, the spreadsheet. That's, that's science, that science is valuable. That's what we're doing. I'm not saying it's not valuable. But both, we need both. And it's time now to really bring these other ones up. Beauty, beauty is another one. Can you imagine a world, you know, that scares me, a world without beauty. 
And actually, nothing scares me more than a society that has, you know, you <laughs> the, the, the movie Footloose, yeah. right? I mean, can you even imagine not being able to dance or have arts or, or, or have a culture where you can actually really engage with beauty? It's scary. And we hold that. We hold beauty. They're, women represent beauty. Just look at all the variety of, of beauty that, that's represented in women, right? There's so much variety. It's endless. Travel the world. I mean, I, I, it's, it's like, you know, I was in there Kurst once in Russia, and I just could not believe, you know, like from one country to another. Just, it's endless. And I feel that women represent that, that endless beauty that we see in nature. And, and I'm not saying that human beings don't represent that, both men and women, yes they do, but there's an obvious, very overt correlation here, just in our physical bodies. So beauty, we stand for beauty, we like things to be beautiful, right? It's not, it's not just about the job, it's about the shoes and the dress, and the, you know, the whole way that I'm creatively expressing myself. And that's okay, people. It's okay, it's not a side thing. It's actually super relevant. How we express ourselves artistically and through our bodies and our hair and the whole thing, that is relevant to what we're doing. And that's gonna be relevant to the change that we see in the world because we're upholding the value of beauty, which is not a trivial thing. Okay, so that's the sort of explanation about the masculine and the feminine and the power of the feminine and what we want to do to kind of to bring that in. Um, emerging women is really about bringing this into a conversation. What I love about our time right now is that I don't really know what it's going to do to have all these women consciously stepping into positions of leadership. There are some things we know, like beauty and relationship and um, intimacy, and so those things we, we know. But what's beautiful about this is it's never really happened. And so let's give it some air and not like create, this is, these are all the scientific things that are gonna happen when women step into power. We actually don't even know. We need to give it breath, you know? We need to allow women to step into these roles, continue to have the conversation, and allow it to flower. Because there's going to be some unexpected shit coming up, I can tell you that right now. <laughs> it's just going to happen. I mean, it, we don't know. It's never happened before. There can be a level of unknown here. We're comfortable with that. Let's not put it into a box. Let's see what happens. And that's what Emerging Women is about. We're trying to have this conversation to just allow people to witness each other as we're emerging, hold each other in tribe, not hold each other accountable. I mean, you know, okay, maybe that's okay. I, I need that sometimes. That's not what I'm talking about here. We don't need to hold each other accountable. We need to hold each other. That's what we're talking about. That's it. All the structures for mentoring. They're, they're, men have this, and it's, and it's totally fantastic that they do. They have these systems in place that have been around for years and years and years. We have a blank slate, and our number one superpower is relationship and connectivity. So we're gonna leave with that, we're gonna take the tribe, we're gonna connect, we're gonna hold it, we're gonna witness, we're gonna leave with our superpowers, and then we're just gonna see what happens, because I really don't even know. <laughs> this is as far as I've come, right here. <laughs>